I'm so thrilled. Okay, tell us where you're where you're joining from and what it is you do. And welcome to Family Search's live stream, everybody. Hi, everybody. It is just a pleasure to be here with you all today. Um, my name is Anne Gillespie Mitchell. You may have seen me in other videos, or maybe you met me at Roots Tech. Uh, today, I'm here to talk about newspapers. I've been with Ancestry.com for 12 years. Um, but I work with a variety of products. I work with newspapers and Fold3 and Find a Grave and uh, Roots Web. I also work on the version of Ancestry you see in the library. Hmm. So if it's out there, I've probably worked on it. At some this is point. great. We can ask yes. we can ask questions. So many questions, and um, I will I will do my best. Okay. Oh, it's so exciting to have you. And and we're talking newspapers today. Tell us about a little bit about your family and maybe why you're interested in family history. Love to. Um, so I have been interested in family history before I joined Ancestry. Um, it's a hobby. It was a hobby. And then um, when I saw an opening in Ancestry, I was like, oh, I've got to see if I can get that job. So that's how that all came about. Um, I just started researching different things. My dad was really into it. And then I sort of picked it up from him. And um, I was really surprised because I live in California now, but I was really surprised how deep my Southern roots were. Mm. All my ancestors who are in the States and we've been here since the 1700s are either in Virginia, North Carolina or South Carolina. Wow. All of them until my generation when we all started moving around. So very deep Southern roots. Um, uh, my claim to fame is I am a very distant cousin of Johnny Cash. Oh, so, yes, yes, that's awesome. And the man in black. So yes, that is my <laughs> famous person that I mentioned. You I know, love that. But it, it's the little stories, which is what newspapers is so good at, right? Mm -hmm. But it's the little stories that you find out about people that are just make it so worthwhile. Oh, yes. And I I can't wait for us to dive into um, your wealth of knowledge around understanding how to search and leverage what newspaper resources there are out there. And so for today, we're specifically focusing on newspapers.com, but there'll be right. times where you address some other recommendations if people can't find a location um, or newspaper for a location. So I say we go ahead and we get started and people who are participating, if you have questions about newspapers.com, please let us know. And we're going to kick this off with why do newspapers matter when it comes to family history and genealogy? Yes. Um, okay. So I'm sharing my screen. Yes. It seems like the perfect backdrop. Okay. Um, so why do newspapers matter? Because when you do your family history, we do our family trees. We keep working just in straight lines, right? But we, and we find the names and we're super excited, but we have to be able to put people in context, right? Because if you were born in 1950, it's really different, obviously, that if you're born in 1850 and you know that at some level, but you have to put yourself in context. How are women treated differently? How were, how is education different? All these things in newspapers is going to help you discover that part of the country and how to put your ancestors in context. So for me, newspapers is all about context. Well, and I think like you, as you were talking, you know, you can, you can see from the types of ads or comics right. or the headlines or the announcements. And I think that's very compelling, even if you're not researching ancestors, just to get an understanding of location, time and place. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Well, take us through kind of the basics of how to search and what newspapers.com has to offer. Okay. So whether you're searching on newspapers.com or any other um, newspaper site or even a book, it's really different than searching, say, on Ancestry or Family Search. Because on Ancestry or Family Search, you know names, you know um, birth dates, and you know locations. And when you type those things into search, the Ancestry and Family Search, they know those things too, right? 
So let's say that I'm going to, I'm, I've got the newspapers up here and you see a search box. So you're going to just type something in. Now I'm not making this up, okay. but I have an ancestor, I'm not making this up, whose name is Ready Cash. <laughs> okay, this is great. All right. And okay. he lived in Virginia. He's part of my Johnny Cash line. Okay, now if I'm going to type that into Ancestry, Ancestry will know that Reddy is his first name. Actually, it's Reddy, but he went by Reddy. And that Cash was his last name. But you'll notice that when I type it in here, Reddy Cash, think about how often that phrase is just going to show yeah. up like down here, right? Yes. As that phrase. So why is it different? That's the difference between newspapers and what we call um, fielded search over on Ancestry or find our um, family search. This is all OCR. Okay. We bring up the, um, if you look at any page here, we have uh, scanners that go through and it's called optical character recognition. And they just scan, scan, scan. Then we apply some really smart data science principles, other things to help identify um, ads, words, all that good kind of stuff. But if you've got one of those really weird names that um, could be something else, like Ready Cash. Ready Cash. <laughs> that is, you have to be a little bit more clever. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you here in a second, um, some things you can do to make it feel more uh, fielded where you can do location and date. But one of the best tests anywhere you're searching and this is goes way beyond newspapers okay type in ready cash if you get back ready cash as a name you're on fielded search if you get it back as a phrase mm -hmm. you're probably in ocr and okay. there is the difference and um so you're searching by name and how do people know okay take just show us something maybe that you found with him in that do you have anything fun <laughs> i actually don't have any newspaper articles for him i just used him because, because um, of his name yes yes because okay. of the name so how do people know um if you have because you have how many thousands of newspapers available on this website. You're the biggest. We're the biggest. Yes. That doesn't always make you the best, but in this case, I think it does. <laughs> Let's go with that. Let's um, go with that. I'm, I'm very, very proud of the sites I work you on. You should be. It's, Love it's fantastic. And so tell us how we know if we're going to have luck finding information here, if this is something we should exactly. investigate. Cause you never know. Right. So, um, before you ever start searching on any site, you should go and find their card catalog, their browse, whatever it is, so you get a feel for what's there. If you go over here to browse on newspapers, you'll see US. These are all the non-US sites that we currently have content for, and it's constantly growing. Australia, Canada, England, etc. cetera. Uh, let's say that you were looking for somewhere in the US. Um, a lot of the, or a couple of the examples I'm gonna to do today are in North and South Carolina. So click on North Carolina. We tend to think of genealogy and family history in terms of counties, mm. but newspapers are done in cities. cities. They're sometimes during, done in counties, right? But sometimes in cities. So you have to dig in this way. Um, so if you're looking for somebody who lived in the Charlotte area, you've got all these options. Wow. That's a lot of options. That's I a have, lot. I've uncovered all sorts of fun little details. Mm -hmm. And some of them are grim and some of them are fun. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll find, and because in newspapers, you know, if it's grim or it's sensational, you're much more likely to find those people in the papers. One thing you might notice here, you see the little, um, I guess that's orange, orange plus. Yes. yes. That is what we call publishers extra. This is content that is from 1923 to current. So it's still in copyright. Oh, we can do a whole copyright stuff. So yes. we worked with, in this case, say the Charlotte news to get their copyright stuff onto our site, which is awesome. Cause I mean, finding, I mean, really when you look at finding anything recent from like 1950 on, it can be really, really hard and newspapers may be your best thing, mm -hmm. best way to do that. 
But because this is still in copyright and the newspapers are very um, careful about how they share that information, there is an extra, one extra fee that you have to pay to get all the papers that are in the plus. We even have to pay it. I get all my other subscriptions free. This one I have to pay for. Well worth it, well worth it. But again, you should check and make sure that it's something before you lay down your hard earned money, make sure it's something that you um you're gonna have to apply to you. Yeah. Right? Yes. Because I have gone in and like I was looking for an obituary for my great grandmother was trying to figure out who her parents were. Sure enough, the month she died, that paper, we didn't have it. So you will always want to go check. I mean, but if you go here, then you can see the years, you can click on the year, you can see the month. Can and you, you can zoom in it. just to make your screen a little bit bigger so people can see? Sure. Their, yes. Thank you. Is that, is that better? Well, let's okay. do maybe one more and see, especially for people. Yes. Okay. I think that's much better. Okay, good. Good. Yes. 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 Thank you for that feedback, everybody. We appreciate oh, it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, but as you can see, that will give you an idea. Mm -hmm. Now you can, you're still going to want to go ahead and do searches but here let me show you another trick that you can do you see where it yes. says here it says browse yes show us all the tricks all, all the tricks. tricks this is my favorite check all right so map if you're watching this you're a family historian and i know you love maps right we, we all, all love maps, maps. yeah maps are the best maps mm -hmm. are the best all right so let's go here this is all the papers we've got all over the world but like politics family history is local and hopefully not as contentious. All right, so here we are. So I'm gonna look in North and South Carolina. And if I just keep clicking here, I will get closer and closer into what I'm looking for. Let's see, right, there we go. There we go. All right, so in the Charlotte area, that's where, I mean, look at all these papers here, right? This is fascinating. And, and years, then, years of papers, just years. Oh, I know. All right. So do you have any ancestors that live on a county or state line? If about half the people who are watching are raising their hands. Probably do. Okay. Okay. All my ancestors, it seems, on my maternal side, all so they lived right in this area here okay so do you think just because they lived in north carolina didn't show up in south carolina newspapers of course they did because that's just the way that goes so you just keep on moving to here say i know they live in king's mountain so i'm getting new papers that i can look at right mm -hmm. it's like oh maybe they're in these or maybe they're over here or maybe they're down because it turns out the Gaffney Ledger talked about all these people all the time. You'll find the pages that have that information, but it's going to give you the idea of where to look. You you just never know. You just never know. Also, so here's another trick. Okay. Let me show you one more. Can I show you an example? Yes, will you please show us an example? And we're loving all these okay. tricks. It's fascinating. Okay, those are good. All right, so this also gets back. I'm just going to show you how to do a basic search. So okay. I always start on the search page. All right, you'll notice on the search page, you can start to type in, and here's an example, Abraham Lincoln, 1865, 1861, 1865 in Illinois. He wasn't in Illinois. Okay, whatever. Um, you'll see your recent searches and you'll see a search alert. You can create, I'll show you how to do that, but you can create a search alert. Um, and if we get more papers and we find something, we'll let you know. Oh, this is very good. Um, so we're working for you and you don't have to. Okay, as you can see, these are all Canadian examples. I was doing a, uh, a webinar for uh, our Canada uh, site. All right, so these are just different searches that you could do. All right, so let's think about, I'm going to search for Ben Donald, who died in Texas okay. in 1818, 1880, sorry. So his name was Benjamin Donald, 
right? There we go. Now, remember how I told you that we aren't fielded search, but you could sort of fake it? Mm -hmm. That's how you do that. So his name was Benjamin Donald. I know he died in 1880, so I'm going to enter that year here, all right? It doesn't say that it's a death year, but this is when I want to look for it, okay? And I know he was living, I know he died in Texas. Here we go, Texas. Oh boy. This is, here we are, we're on the hunt. We're on the hunt. We're on the hunt. <laughs> it's not there. I'm going to give you a clue. I might also type in, I, I he, make sure that you use variations. Mm -hmm. Ben Donald. Nope, mm -hmm. it's not there. We could page through this, but trust me, it's not there. Mm -hmm. Here's the trick. Often obituaries are placed not just in the local newspaper, but also in the newspaper where somebody might have been born or a large part of their family lives. Mm -hmm. Where was Mr. Donald born? He was born in Virginia. So I'm going to go down here. I'm sorry. See this map down here? Yes. I click on Virginia and I'm going to unclick Texas because I just want to look in Virginia now. And you'll, you can also type it up there. All right. Now, if I go down here, I don't want it in Richmond. Okay. I'm not finding it quite easily enough there. So what I want to do is look in for a local newspaper. I know we lived in Lexington. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go here at the newspapers. And I know Stanton, that's pronounced Stanton in Virginia because it is. <laughs> I know that's very near Lexington. Now, again, this is a canned example. It took me a lot longer to do this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. <laughs> that's not the one. But we're going to see something when you click we're gonna on We're going to see something, but that's not what I wanted to see. Oh, my gosh. Oh, look at that. Look at, wait, hold on. Hold That sewing machine, there was a $1,000 reward. What was the sewing machine? What was the reward? Oh, my gosh. For? What did we find? Um, $1,000 offered to a great range of work and do it as well as any other machinist machine as can be done on the, okay. I mean, that just that's is what you just talked good. about the context right the ads right. the comics like that's so entertaining and interesting exactly. exactly all right so i have obviously forgotten the year he was born this is really embarrassing so let's break it out just a little bit more let's see if i get up oh, found it there we, it was in 1881 <gasps> right who can remember dates <laughs> no not me <laughs> so here we go killed Ben Donald, oh. well known to many of our Lexington people as a member of the Rockbridge Rifles, Civil War veteran, so we'll be off on a whole nother tangent there, was killed in Texas a few weeks ago being shot dead in the street. Sad. Yes. Yes. So, wow. But it, you have to look in different places. And then you're like, oh, it was part of the Rockbridge Rifles, right? Yes. And, if there's one place that you want a rat hole and just go off on all the different tangents, it's here. You can do it here. So you could go up here and you want that phrase, right? And I bring this up because I'm putting it in double quotes, mm -hmm. which means it's going to match that phrase exactly. Together. I don't have to find just Rockbridge and rifles on one page. Oh my goodness. So I could search here. Look, the Rockbridge Rifles. This is out of Richmond. It's a Civil War thing. And I won't go down that rabbit hole too much, but you can start to find information about what it never mentions, Ben. It never mentions his brother, John, who's also served with him. But I can start to learn things about them. Abe Lincoln can never whip such a people, right? So try and if you find a place they worked or church they went to search for just that in that area and you'll find new and interesting things so rabbit hole all the time find yeah. something rabbit hole rabbit hole rabbit hole you never know what you might find okay and that's something else that you can do is you can create clippings right like if you find something will you exactly. show us will you show us what that looks like of course 
All right, so I want to do, let's say this whole thing. See up here with the little scissors where it says mm -hmm. clip? I click on that. I'm going to move the box around. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to add, and I'm going to spell correctly, story about Rockbridge Rifles. Always put something in here, and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay. And then I'm going to clip it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you can save it to Ancestry. Mm -hmm. Save it. Email it to somebody. You can Facebook it, Twitter, or you can embed it. Or you can just uh, not worry about that one. But one of the things I want you to know is you have to have a subscription to view the site. Mm -hmm. But if you find a really cool story, you can create a clipping and you can share that with anybody. Anybody can look at it. Because what we know is if you share this with your cousin, they're going to be like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And then they're going to want to subscribe because we know how this works. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. And you have to tell us. Um, yeah. for people who work at Ancestry, I think you mentioned that you had a Slack channel where everyone shared different interesting newspaper clippings, yes. right? And I can't, legal won't let me show you the Slack right. channel itself. You can tell us. I can tell you guys. Um, here's just a couple that I found this morning. Like somebody put this one up here. I don't know why, but that's weird, right? Yeah, you just never know what you're gonna find or or this one you can't make this stuff up an orangutan on an elephant i think i i yeah i i i don't know <laughs> i don't know why but we have this slack channel i mean y'all are probably um from, maybe you're not but with slack most companies have it in the background so we can all talk to different groups of people mm -hmm. and there's one called newspaper clippings on ancestry and ancestry covers all our products and uh people just find stuff and they just post it in there weird funny comics weird ads. stories ads you name it they post it in there it, it does really give the flavor to a place and a location you know like a time mm -hmm. and people that like you wouldn't get in, you know, vital records. So I love that angle that you exactly. Mentioned. Can I show you an example? Yes. Of how newspapers can expand on a vital record. Yes, 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 yes. We're, we're okay. here for it. This is everyone's enjoying it. And and once again, we're thrilled to have Anne here with us from Ancestry. And we're talking about newspapers.com, how to search, the things you can find, why it's worth it. And let us know what questions you have in the comments. We'll, we'll start getting to those in a little bit. Okay, okay. talk to us. So, what are we looking at? This is a marriage record on Ancestry for my grandmother's second marriage. Her name was, here she is, is Jenny Payne Turner. That's her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Of course. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, perfect. All right, so here she is, and she's marrying a gentleman named William F. Crenshaw. And by the way, she lied about her age here, and she lied about her age in her first marriage certificate, but that's not important. So I know here that they were married 25th November 1957 and in Mecklenburg County, North Carolina. Okay, so we should then go search for the marriage announcement, right? Yes, absolutely. Because, because now I can get details. So, and I've already done all the searching just to simplify, but here's yes. an article. Crenshaw's, because that's who she married, in Puerto Rico to make home in Belmont. They honeymooned in Puerto Rico. That's not in the marriage certificate. Not at all. So, or in, unless they had a journal, you would never know that. Then I don't have any of that stuff. <laughs> and it tells you the address. You could go Google that. It tells you who the Reverend was. So you can go and you can match that. They were married at the Hawthorne Lane Methodist Church. She wore navy blue because in 1957, we didn't all wear the same things we wear now. Bridezillas weren't really a thing then, I guess. <laughs> and she had white accessories and an orchid. Wow. And I can just, I don't have a picture. picture. 
you can. And she was a very tall woman. She was like five foot 11. I mean, that's really tall back then, especially. And you know, it, her, her parents, that she was a member of the nursing staff at Mercy Hospital and that her new husband is the co-owner of William H. Crenshaw Yarns. There's so many Crenshaw Yarns in here. Right? And then you can take Crenshaw Yarns. It's like, okay, this man has money. Good job, Grandma. <laughs> and, then, and then you could go just search for WH Crenshaw. This is just articles about being a president, but these are people and you can go hunt down articles about Crenshaw Yarns. Oh I could God. also search for the hospital where she was working at. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of, I mean, if you're doing newspapers, rabbit hole, rabbit hole, rabbit hole. You just want to, anything you can think of, you want to go search for it. Wow. Okay. This is fascinating. And I love how you started with a vital record and then you went to a to, to here and you took us on something that really paints a picture about your five foot 11 um navy blue wearing orchid holding puerto rico honeymooning um relative right, right? that's right? so much more okay. powerful can i show you one more vital record it's a show little bit all the things and we're here for all of it yes okay so and i want to show you a mistake you might make and i don't want you to make it because no, please, oh you're gonna it. miss it <laughs> all right let's make this a little bigger okay this is great this is a great um yeah a great uncle of mine, great, great uncle, doesn't matter. Isaac Turner, you find his death certificate. It's got his parents, it's got his spouse. You're happy, right? You attach it, you go on your way. Mistake number one. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to look at the cause of death every time. You don't do that, you will be sorry. This is hard to read, but it says hemorrhage of the brain from pistol shot wound. Oh no. Oh, it gets worse. <gasps> Go down on the page. Homicide. Oh. All right. We're all suddenly in law and order, right? Yes. Okay. So what, what are you going to do? You're going to go look it up in a newspaper article. Yes. So I do a search for Isaac Turner, 1937, North and South Carolina, because he's right on the line. Mm -hmm. Boy, there are some headlines here, aren't there? Isaac Turner and wife were killed. They were both killed? Oh, no. It gets better. <gasps> it gets better and worse. Let me go straight to this one. Okay. Here we go. They're found dead in home on Camp Road. Mm. Mr. Turner will be buried and his by his first wife. This is his second wife, and she's going back to Rome, Georgia. Remember, they're both dead. But here we go is the story. He's sitting, he's eating watermelon. <gasps> and in the kitchen of their home, and his second wife takes a gun and shoots him in the head. And I can read you more of the story. She then calls the cops, and then she shoots herself. Oh my goodness. Oh my don't, goodness. Don't you know, everybody in that family was like, I told you she was trouble. I told oh. you he should have never married her. And watch this. I'm going to bring up find a grave. They, yes. they, this is her okay. burial plot. And they give this whole thing. I found death records for Mamie and her husband and confirmed she died in Greenville. She did more than die in Greenville, right? Mm-hmm. You go over here. Oh. You go over here and you look at hers and hers is a suicide. The trick here though, is anytime two people die on the same day. Yes. You know, you know, there's a story, something, but if yes. you don't look at reasons why people die, mm -hmm. there are other, um, you might see, oh, maybe they died of, um, smallpox or tuberculosis. Then you could start to search for, say, tuberculosis in the local newspaper in that year. Was there an epidemic? Where did people go? Um, mm -hmm. Smallpox, were there, um, or polio, or different things that might have happened. Again, if you find that your ancestor died from that, they may not be mentioned in the newspaper, but you can search the newspaper from around that time and see if people were talking about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not all stories are going to be as fascinating. I mean, this one is fascinating and sad. But very 
But if you don't look at the death certificate and then hunt down the details, you miss the whole story. I so, mean, that's the story. Yeah. And you, you start, the other one was a wedding, you know, wedding certificate, death certificate. Have you found this to be true with other like birth certificates, other things where you can just yes. find out more info? You just never know. Just a never lot know. of times, um, it depends on the time births weren't, aren't always announced, but they are in some newspapers. Um, also you should know that when it comes to, uh, vital records and announcing things like that, um, also search, uh, ex not now, but back in the early 1900s, um, uh, 1800s, there was always a women's page, right? You know, society columns, women's page, that kind of thing. Also, especially down South, but even up North, uh, African-Americans had their own section of the paper. They weren't put with the rest of it. Is it horrible? Yes, but you got to know where to go look for people. And that would be one thing. So you might just want to see what's going on. Who are the people? Who are the known names? Mm -hmm. And on and on and on. Who are the famous people that you know of in the community? Go research them. What were the businesses? I mean, you know, you always want to go say, what movies were playing, right? Mm -hmm. If you go and you look at any paper, and this is a big one, but see this down... Um, let me make a look just a little bit bigger. See right here where it says 12 of 24. Yes. You know, they're 24 pages. And if you bring up the film strip, mm -hmm. it'll give you a general idea of what the pages look like. So if I go over here, that looks like it might be comics, right? You can read the same comics your ancestors read. Wow. Fun. Yes. 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 I think that is super fun. How many, um, I mean, how far back do newspapers go? Good question. So how would you find the answer to that? Um, go here to papers. Okay. Oh, yes. We have papers and not many, but from 1690 to 2020. Wow. And if you go here and you just sort of, let's update it. Here is the one paper we have from 1690. Oh, can you show us? Of course. Oh my goodness. I mean, look at that, right? Wow. I mean, you may not have anybody in this paper, but if you're a student of history and we all are. Yes. <laughs> this is just interesting, right? It is fascinating. Um, oh, and you see all these blue lines? Yeah. That what do those mean? That's somebody's made a clipping. Okay. So, so if you okay. click on it, you'll see the people who have clipped it. 1690 okay. article about Thanksgiving. There wow. 1690 is the first. Um, okay. So if, 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 what about like when people can go to libraries and local places, how can they find out about what's available at um, libraries? Because a lot of them have newspapers that people can look at, right? What do you recommend um, for that situation? Um, so if your library has newspapers, you will, most um, libraries have a way that you can get in, like if you have like a number on your card or barcode mm -hmm. or something, they'll let you log in and then you can see also newspapers at home. You could call your library and ask. A lot of libraries on the page will list all the different things they have. Um, and we may not have a light, or your library may not have newspapers.com, or maybe we just don't have papers for your area at that time. I would start by calling the local library. I know we have some of the papers for Lexington, Virginia, but we don't have all of them. But I know the library has microfilm for all of them. Mm -hmm. If you have a really well crafted question, like you can't just say, okay, my ancestor was John Smith, who did he marry? They're <laughs> not gonna know. But if you're like, I know my ancestor, John Smith, died in 1903, and he was buried, because I know from Find a Grave, in the Lexington Cemetery, mm -hmm. can you check to see if there's an obituary for him? That's pretty specific. Mm -hmm. And when they get the time, of a lot of the librarians will go and try and look this stuff up for you. Or, okay. better yet, or at least they can say, look, I can't, I don't have time to do this but we have microfilm from this year to this year. And next time you're on a road trip, then you know to go, go looking. So, yeah. 
Okay. The super good tip, because not everything, I mean, that's the point, right? Not everything's available everywhere. And that's oh, a great. Also um, check places like Allen County library. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the Houston library has just tons and tons. Also the state libraries are mm -hmm. also, our archives are also a good place to, to call and ask what they have available mm -hmm. because they may have stuff that we don't have. Usually we do because we work with most of them, but um, they may have stuff that we've not been able to digitize yet. So, and we have like billions of pages or hundreds of millions of pages, but it takes time and we're going slower so, right now. So yeah. Tell us a little bit about how has, um, how have things been different at Ancestry in, in your role or in people that work with you on, on newspapers with, with COVID and you're, you're not working in an office. What is that like for you guys? They shut down all our us offices in march so we most people could not go in i know that we have offices also in dublin and in mm -hmm. london and those have been shut down and open for various times uh so all of us were said you got to work from home um and we're an internet company so we're managing but there are some exceptions the uh utah office which is in lehigh um right up at the point of the mountain if you guys live in utah you know what i'm talking about um they have allowed a small percentage of people to go in and in that is included some of the people who work on newspapers because mm -hmm. the scanning and the all the stuff that they do has to be done on very um you know they're expensive high quality machines that you can't bring home with you oh you wow so, you know, we've had to do different stuff with different shifts and all that kind of stuff and have make sure people are socially distanced and everything. You have to take care of people and Ancestry has been doing a great job of that. Oh, that's so, that's good to know. Um, okay, but, I, we, have, but we have managed to add last month, 6 million new pages. So they are <laughs> done. That's, done. that's awesome. Okay. We have a question. Of course. Um, and this one is Shelly. And Hi, Shelley. Um, she is really curious about places from some of her, her Jewish ancestors in other countries. So I don't know if you have an answer for her, but would you show us, I know we saw more of the, the map, but can, and you showed us a worldview, but can you talk about the other locations you have information for? We currently, my guess is your ancestors, if they're not in the US, they came from Europe, Eastern Europe, Europe, Russia. I think I she's in Russia, yes. Russia newspapers, we do not have. I don't okay. know who owns them. Um, we, I can't give away anything new and specific, but we are always working on international content because we know that um, in if you live here in the US, you've always got somebody that came from someplace else. Mm -hmm. So we are always working on getting more international content. Um, if you're, I don't know the answer specifically on Jewish, mm -hmm. but I do know somebody who might know the answer. And is there a place where I could post later if I find out anything yes. interesting? Yes, yes. And I can, um, I can also get Shelly's um, info to you as well. Okay. Um, okay. Shelly, uh -huh. just maybe Shelly in the comments, drop your email if you're comfortable or send family search a message with that. Um, and she says, bless you and thank you. But um, she, and the person, the person I'll reach out to is Krista Cowan. I, you guys oh, may Yes, know. Krista. Yes. Krista is just, if, she's my go-to person when I ever have. <laughs> like life. the world. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But she, she really under, she knows um, how to do uh, research for people with Jewish heritage and uh, you know, you know what, you know, and you know what you don't know. Yes. And, and then when you know someone who knows you're at, you're, you're, you're great. But this was really interesting though, because I see some other locations listed. Um, so these are the other countries that you currently have papers for, right? Right. I mean, we have like, a large collection of English, mm -hmm. 
Ireland, Northern Ireland, not too many. I don't know how we ended up with Panama. That one just, oh, well, I guess we are, there's a US portion of that. Scotland, Canada, you know. Okay. All sorts of different, but like I said, look, always look. go look and see what's there before you, and once you find that it has something that is gonna cover your time, um, yeah, then you'll, you'll spend hours just it's hours hours <laughs> you're, you're, we're, we're talking amongst friends there okay amy has a question and um mm -hmm. she has an ancestor with the famous name that lived in the same area as the famous named person but is not famous in the same time period so i like for example johnny cash who lived in the same county as the actual johnny cash in the same time period is there any recommendations for um, Amy. Great question, Amy. It is a great question and there may or may not be a good answer. Um, one thing you can do is when you go to search, let's say that you were looking for, I'll just pick a random name here, John Smith. Okay. And the famous person is Captain John Smith. So what you can do is say minus Captain and what it will do is it'll find the phrase John Smith. I put it in double quotes. You can do that or not. And any page that has the word captain on it, it won't show me that page. Okay. Oh, that's really helpful. Um, uh, hold on. My computer thinks it needs to reboot. Okay. I avoided that problem. So, okay, good. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Oh, here's a, let me show you while we're here. Mm -hmm. um, don't forget to check out obituaries and marriages we have gone through and we've worked with our crackerjack data scientist and they've come up with all these really fascinating new algorithms and you can just search obituaries or marriages oh that's such a convenient experience isn't it oh yes and <laughs> the indexes are also on ancestry so you can search the index on ancestry and to find that, let me show you. You would go to Ancestry. Do, 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 do. Come on. Don't be slow. Oh, thank you. It's always slow when you're demoing. Go to Card Catalog. There we go. Type in newspapers.com. And you will see the three indexes we have. We have, look at that, 800 wow. million obituaries indexed. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, we're getting we're getting a ton of questions. Are you good for a few more? Um, Bring okay. them. Let's talk. Uh, and let me look and see the name of this gentleman as I'm okay. scrolling through here. You guys, these are great. Doug asks, what steps can be taken to encourage a newspaper to participate? His hometown paper in Wyoming does not currently participate. So, is there something that Doug can do to say? Yes. Okay, talk to us. What does that look like? Right now, we go for the low-hanging fruit. So anything that's on microfilm or microfish, we're really interested in. It's, we have to scan the papers. That's a much more laborious task. So if, if those papers are on Microsoft or microfilm, Microsoft, microfilm or microfish, there is a, let me see, if you go to Ancestry Academy, and that's also another um, uh, ancestry property. And these are all our videos. And you do search. Oh, and you'll find lots of um, videos and all sorts of stuff we put together. Uh, oh, here we go. Newspapers.com, we're institution partners ties content um the 51 minute it would give you um an idea and i better not i don't want to start in that it would give you an idea libraries could content digital broken but um ancestry academy is a really great make sure that video is still up and nothing's wrong but uh it's a really great place just to go and see what videos we have we have all sorts of videos by all sorts of people so Okay, here's another one. Anyways. Betsy, 
Betsy wants to know if there's a, a good way to search for social mentions of your ancestors within certain newspapers or articles. So I'm assuming like the society pages and things like that. Right. So a couple of things you could do. Uh, let's see. When you go to search, you probably know what I would search within a specific time frame. Mm -hmm. I would pick, I would find um, the name. I'm going to go here to paper I know. Uh, a name, just, I would do it paper by paper. Okay. And I would, you can then browse by date or what you can do is, um, yeah, you can search that paper and let's say, you know, that you're just looking in the 1960s, right? So you could type in the date there. And then you could just search for whoever, you know, Jane Smith or whatever her name is, um, do it there. Or you can just go through different papers because every paper is usually had social mentions um, on the same specific page and you could just browse them that way. Uh, and that is a really good point. Um, Betsy, I think brought that up. Is because mm -hmm. because um, a lot of times, especially in rural areas, You'll just find these little mentions. Mrs. William Crenshaw and her sister went to visit her brother off in Alabama. And that will be it. And remember with women, they were often referred to as Mrs. whatever their husband's name was. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a first name, but whatever. So you got to think about how to search for that as well. Okay. And you answered someone else's question. I don't know if it's the same Betsy, but she wanted to know how to search just obituaries and just marriages so okay. that was awesome and have so much fun with those um this was interesting larry is saying he has seen um the phrase captain has been incorporated appearing to be part of the given name is that something you've seen in newspapers and i'm not sure if he's referring to newspapers so larry you might want to clarify um sometimes sometimes you'll just see captain smith or ah, captain okay. Jones. And so, here's another trick, just because somebody referred to themselves as captain or colonel, that doesn't mean they were ever a captain or a colonel. Sometimes people just assume. They could make it up and they're being interviewed or photographed or something. Really, our ancestors never inflated their position in life, but it does happen. <laughs> right. We don't, we don't know anyone that does that today, right? <laughs> okay, as we are um, wrapping up, I just want to know what has been your favorite discovery you've made, or maybe maybe memorable discovery you've made um, just uh, just researching in newspapers. Uh, one of the things that I just found really interesting um, is I put I was putting together a talk on uh, textile mills in the South. Like I mentioned, I'm. I have a lot of Southern research and it was just researching the stories of people who worked in the mills and you would find pictures and you would find layouts of the mills and about this fire and that fire. So I was just finding this whole history that of the people of my ancestors who were working in these places. And I suddenly had this new concept of what they had to do and what they lived through and how a certain event just suddenly changed their whole lives. And you don't get that out of the census record, right? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You'll never see that, but you see it because you research those little tidbits you find in vitals and census and all those other things. Yes. Okay. And I think one thing to show, I love that. I love uh, my experience with Mills is, you know, the BBC show North and South, <laughs> so, <laughs> which, you know, I may just have to watch it, but before we, um, before we wrap up, will you show us the clippings piece? Cause that was something, uh, I think that's really interesting and valuable. Okay. So I showed you all how to make a clipping, right? Yes. And when you make a clipping, if you click up here on clippings, you'll see I have 641. Yes, you um, are I'm dedicated. <laughs> I'm dedicated. Well, and every time I'm researching a talk or whatever, I just throw stuff in here. So you see how I um, 
I put a title. This was a story about Rockbridge Rifles. Mm -hmm. I can search, find everything in all my clippings anywhere that I mention, say, Rockbridge. Perfect. So it's like tags. It's exactly like that. So I can do that. Um, and these clippings then, um, let's go back. This one's good enough. A couple of things you'll find. Um, I worked with news, the newspapers team. We um, wrote the um, a citation. So okay. you can copy that citation. You don't have to think about it. Um, you can save it to Ancestry. Mm -hmm. You can edit all your little data in here. You can print it. You can download it. It downloads in a PDF, or you can send it. And if you uh, if you share it, let's say via email, it'll just send a link to the person, and they'll get into your clipping, and they can see everything you clipped. Okay. Wow. And if you make your clippings public, like I do. Um, and there's a setting you can let's see see here this little gear thing yes if you click on gear you can say public and make it public so people can find those uh those clippings and like here i just randomly the bristol herald courier i can see what are people clipping that can be interesting yes. usually in really small town papers because mm -hmm. they may be people who are researching the same thing you are right you can and, make a connection i mean look at this one oh, here's so a marriage awesome. and it's got her picture at her wedding dress oh. all right that is gold oh and look if you went to the actual page yes the diamonds <gasps> Okay, we're rattling. I know, but look at that. Oh, <laughs> that ring was 200. This one was 50. I wonder what size ring she had. I hope he splurged on her, right? Oh, my goodness. Yes. But yes. Isn't that awesome. Yeah. I mean, think about it, right? Think about what kind of things they paid for, how yes. much was a loaf of bread, all that kind of stuff. Well, and I think um, what you've described for us today is it's really the, the, the image that keeps coming into my mind. Newspapers are black and white, but really they add color to the characters in your family history, in their lives. And it gives you a sense of who they were and, and, and sort of what their experience was like. And I think that helps to build empathy and understanding and all of those really meaningful things that are important. Um, Aaron, you are so much fun. And now... Um, what what sort of final message would you like to share with our guests before we sign off? And I'm going to have you full screen um, so people can see your face. <laughs> One of the things that I like to do is I like to go look at the headlines and the front pages from when my ancestors lived, especially through um, uh, really notable events, mm. whether it be World War II. Go look at your local papers when Pearl Harbor was born. Go look at what the paper was saying when the Civil War started. It's going to be really, really different if you lived in South Carolina than if you lived in New York. You know, everybody talks about how divided we are. It was worse. But put yourself in their shoes. I mean, we don't always ag agree or whatever. But I was just looking at like the whole Pearl Harbor thing and I was just trying, I mean, you could check the weather that day. What was happening? Were they yes. at church when they found out? There were usually two or three papers a day back then when big things happened. Mm -hmm. What did they read? And how was it presented to them? It, it, uh, it just gives you a different perspective. It's one thing to read it in a history book. It's another thing to read it like your ancestors we're reading it. Oh, that, yes. It's all about context. And that's what newspapers bring us. They really make our ancestors come to life. And you, as you pointed out to me, it adds the color of their life. Yes. Well, Anne, thank you. Thank you so much. And I will, um, this, this is available. So everyone who's participating, we love having you. Um, 
And what a just phenomenal conversation and learning. And I feel, I feel like I, I want to go watch North and South and also <laughs> find some newspapers and look at some of those ads. So thank you everybody. Thank you, Anne.